Hello and welcome to this Psychology CPD video titled AQA Holistic Marking in Psychology. Now the purpose of this short topic video is to look at uh, how to mark questions that use mark band descriptors. Now AQA provide detailed advice on this in their Levels of Response Marking document and they outline two key steps. The first step is that you need to determine the level or the mark band in which the answer fits in and secondly you then need to determine the mark. Now, there's quite a lot to read, so I've just picked out the kind of key points from this document, uh, and these are quoted directly from that document. Uh, in order to determine a level, AQA suggests that you should start at the lowest level of the mark scheme, and you can see a picture of the mark scheme on the screen now, to see whether the answer meets the descriptor for this level. So you start at the bottom. If the answer meets the lowest level, you then continue to the next level. You decide if it meets that level, and you continue up this, uh, this descriptions until it fits the particular description you're looking at. There's two more key points, I think, within the document, that it says to firstly look at the overall quality of the, of the actual answer and not to pick holes with any small and specific parts of the answer. And secondly, that you should use a best fit approach because there are many different aspects within the description and therefore you shouldn't sort of focus on any one part. You should actually look at a holistic judgment and which answer, uh, which mark band does the answer fit into overall. As you can see on the screen, the descriptions are all there and there's quite a lot within each of those. And what we've worked on at tutor to is developing a system, a marking grid, and there's many of these around, but we've tried and tested ours many times, uh, that just makes this process much easier. So what we've done is we've taken each of those different descriptors and put them into different columns in a marking grid that will just really help you when marking an answer decide what level and what mark to actually give it. And you can see the marking grid on the screen now, and we'll make these free to download at the end of this session. So I want to sort of go through two answers now with you and show you how we would mark using this marking grid uh, to hopefully make your life significantly easier. So let's imagine we were marking this question at the top of the screen, outline and evaluate the learning theory of attachment. Now what AQA also recommend to their examiners and their markers is that you, uh, as you mark you pick out the different assessment objectives and skills that the, the students are demonstrating. So I'll read out the answer and then sort of put in the marks where I think they're, they're warranted. Uh, so it says here, the learning theory of attachment says that children attach to their caregivers because of food. Okay, well, that's, that's correct. So tick here and some AO1 knowledge being presented. The learning theory is based on Pavlov's ideas of classical conditioning. For example, if we imagine that the dog is now the baby and the bell, the neutral stimulus is now the mother and the food is now the milk. Now, there is some knowledge of classical conditioning here, but it's a, a rather odd application and it, it's, it's poorly explained. So I'll just make a note of that there. The answer continues, according to learning theory, the baby has no reaction to its mother. However, if the baby is presented with an unconditioned stimulus, food and milk, then the baby would produce an unconditioned response of relief, happiness from being fed. Um, again, odd use of the word produce over here. Uh, and again, there is some knowledge of classical conditioning being presented, uh, but not the clearest explanation. During conditioning, the milk and the mother are presented together so that the baby would form an association. They've used a specialist term here, so I'd make a note of that, uh, between the sight of the mother and being fed. After conditioning, the mother, which is now a conditioned stimulus, produces a conditioned response. Um, not a bad attempt here. Some further elaboration is clearly required to make this explanation actually a valid one. It's not a perfect explanation by any means. In terms of evaluation, they go on to say a weakness of this approach comes from Harlow and Harlow as it was proven, I hate the use of the word proven, so I, I think that's a lack of specialist terminology, that the monkey preferred contact comfort from the artificial mother instead of the food. And that's the entire answer. I must note that these are two genuine answers of students that I've actually taught I'm going to be using today. So these aren't ones I've made up, these are real answers. So if we uh, think about this answer and turn our attention back to this marking grid, the idea is that rather than trying to sort of come up with a holistic judgment using the whole band descriptor, we break it into these different uh, criteria. So let's start with knowledge. And remember, we're working our way out from the, from the bottom. So you can see from this answer, was it limited knowledge? Uh, I'd argue it was to some extent limited. Probably it would fit better into this one. It's present, it lacks detail. There was some knowledge around classical conditioning. It was certainly there, uh, but it lacked any detail. In terms of accuracy, uh, was it highly inaccurate? Arguably, yes, there was quite a lot of inaccuracies. Or would it be better fit into the numerous inaccuracies? I think there were some, some correct answers within or some correct material within the answer. So I think actually it fits here with this numerous inaccuracies. Evaluation. Now, it was only that last two lines of evaluation. So there's not no evaluation, but I'd say it's certainly limited. It certainly wasn't very effective uh, and it was nearly absent. 
In terms of focus, which is have they actually answered the question? Well, yeah, there's an attempt to answer the question. And I feel for this particular one, I'd say, well, it lacks clarity. It certainly lacks accuracy in places. And there was some organisation, but it wasn't great. And last but not least, in terms of specialist terminology, now there was some specialist terminology used correctly, which I pointed out, but there was also quite a lot that was used inappropriately. So I would say that specialist terminology was used inappropriately on some occasions. Now this is the first step. You can if you want to, and I'll give you a further example of this in a moment, actually take this even further if, you, if you're feeling sort of more confident with this. And rather than just sort of highlighting the different columns uh, and cells within the columns, you can actually say whether you think the answer was nearer the top of that particular uh, criteria or nearer the bottom. So you'll see from the ticks I've placed on the screen now where I actually feel that answer fits within these different criteria. So I would say for knowledge it was kind of the top of Mark Band 2, but for accuracy maybe at the bottom of Mark Band 2. Once you've done this, so we've done the determine the level step, the next step is actually to determine the mark. Um, and first of all, I think it's very clear to say that from this answer, it's clearly a mark band 2 answer, so I'd fill in, fill in the table by saying it's mark band 2. We then have to work out, do we think it's a, a bottom of mark band 2, so a 4, a middle, or a top being a 6? And I think an answer like this, looking at the sort of distribution of the ticks, I would say it's somewhere between a, a 4 or a 5 uh, out of 12 in this particular case. At this point, you could say what the student did well, so there was some good knowledge in relation to classical conditioning was presented, some special, uh, specialist terminology was used in places, uh, but really what we're focusing on here is what they could do to improve, uh, and I think what's let them down the most is they need to develop their evaluation overall, ensuring the quality of points over quantity, uh, and they should be right in using a sort of P or a Berger paragraph in the next essay, that would be a definite target, uh, and they need to use specialist terminology correctly. Uh, so we can see just by using this grid, it's made the whole marking process, I I'd argue, significantly easy. Let's look at a second example, a, a better essay, uh, just to sort of show you that actually it works for different levels of response. So this one says the learning theory is a, a nurture explanation of attachments, so straight away getting some knowledge in there. Learning theory suggests that we learn to attach through classical conditioning, so even more knowledge. An example of this is uh, an example of this learning is when a child associates uh, their caregiver with food, so we've got even more knowledge there. The food is an unconditioned stimulus which makes a child happy. I've made a note here. Well, why is the child happy? They've not said because it's they're relieved from food. So I think that could have been uh, elaborated on further. The caregiver is a neutral stimulus, so produces no response in the child. Uh, again, more knowledge being presented. During conditioning, the food and the caregiver come together, which makes the happy, uh, child happy because they're relieved from hunger, spelling mistake in there, but not the end of the world. And again, I've put, well, it's only the child that's happy by being relieved from hunger, but the, the parent isn't. Um, after conditioning, uh, the child associates the caregiver with food so that they are happy upon seeing them. So we've got even more knowledge being presented here. Uh, the caregiver is now a conditioned stimulus and the response is also conditioned. Uh, this shows that we learn to form attachments through classical conditioning and being fed. So not a bad uh, answer at all here in terms of the knowledge and plenty of knowledge marks being picked up uh, through this essay. Uh, then they go on to evaluation. Support for this theory comes from research by Rutter. He found that adopted children were still able to form attachments, but it took longer. Uh, a very, very vague description here of Rutter uh, and not entirely accurate. This is important because it shows that children form attachments uh, or that forming attachments can't be biological. Uh, I think that's a, a really bad use of the word can't there. It's very definitive. They should be using phrases like it suggests. Uh, and we're still able to learn to attach. And again, possibly, but how does this support the learning theory? It's not a, not a well-defined or elaborated evaluation paragraph here. Certainly not an effective evaluation paragraph. Fortunately, the answer continues. Uh, a weakness of the theory comes from research by Harlow and Harlow. So they've stated their point. This study found that baby monkeys would run to the cloth monkey uh, rather than the wire monkey that fed it when it felt threatened or scared by a mechanical toy. Uh, that is one of the Harlow studies, so some good evaluation uh, knowledge coming through here. Uh, this is important as it shows we attach for comfort rather than by associating a caregiver with food, as claimed by the uh, learning theory. Not badly explained, I'd say that's a partly, partially effective point. However, it could be argued that the results can't be extrapolated uh, as animals were used in the study. This matters because it's argued that humans have free will and therefore findings can't be applied to humans as we're very different. A really vague use and a rather generic use of the word free will there. Um, it's almost a separate point that's just been thrown in at the end and not particularly effective. So if we go back to our marking grid, this time I'm just going to tick straight away where I think they uh, appear within each of the different uh, mark bands. Uh, I think there's very clear evident uh, knowledge in this. I wouldn't say it's well detailed. I think they missed an opportunity to discuss operant conditioning. So I think top of mark band three would be fair for knowledge. In terms of inaccuracies, there were some, and there were some in the evaluation as well, uh, but not many. Uh, it was occasional inaccuracies in this particular essay. 
Now they had one good evaluation point and two weaker ones, so I would say their evaluation overall was partly effective. Uh, they just needed to have more points in there. I think the essay was uh, well organised in terms of presenting knowledge and then evaluation, so not a bad attempt at organisation, and it was focused on the question, and they used specialist terminology for that quite well. Uh, so you can see here, straight away this is a much better response. The overall mark band is clearly somewhere in mark band 3, and then it's our job to decide where within mark band 3 this sits, and I would say this is a middle or top end of mark band 3, so I'll be giving this 8 or 9 out of 12 in this particular case. Again, we can use this to say uh, what went well, so it was an accurate outline and a good focus on the question, and there was some effective evaluation, in particular the Harlow point. Uh, in terms of what could improve it, I'd say uh, it would have been even better if they'd explored operant conditioning in the outline to get even more knowledge in there. Um, and they could have included three effective discussion points, and possibly by contrasting this theory with another, like Bowlby's theory. So there was different ways they could have picked up their evaluation marks. Hopefully you found this useful, just to give you an idea of how these marking grids work and how you can use them to improve your own marking and make your own marking significantly easier just by photocopying these grids and attaching them to essays. Uh, what I think this uh, marking grid is also really useful for is training your students to peer mark. Uh, and I think you can save hours and hours of time using uh, these as a peer marking assessment tool. Um, I've provided with this uh, particular video uh, a set of resources that will enable you to do this and I think this is an excellent activity uh, that will have the potential to save you many hours of time. As I've just said, if you can train your students to become effective markers who write detailed commentary and, and feedback, uh, your life will become significantly easier. And I want to give you a few tips. So in the resource, we've given you both of the two essays I've shown, uh, which you can photocopy but without any commentary on them. And what I would do is provide your copy, uh, your students with a copy of the, uh, the peer marking grid, the grid we've just used. Uh, but there's a couple of things that I think make this activity work significantly better. Firstly, always make your students work in pairs and read the essays together. Don't let them mark one on their own because you want them to have the discussion and the dialogue around each of the different marking criteria. And that will improve the accuracy of their own marking. When they read the essay, they then assign a mark band for each of the different columns, highlighting their way across it in exactly the same way we've done. And, and then the most important aspect is to train your students to become good at writing these even better if comments. Uh, you don't want them writing things like more evaluation. You want them to really expand on that and maybe model some expectations of what you expect in that even better if box to begin with. So feel free to use this as a peer marking tool as well and a, a great exercise just to get your students used to marking one another's essays. Hopefully you found this uh, short topic video helpful. Uh, we have a load of webinars coming up for psychology, uh, AQA teachers, as well as OCR and Edexcel. So feel free to sign up to any of our uh, future CPD webinars. Please do follow us on Twitter or join one of our uh, really active uh, Facebook communities uh, and you can search for A-level uh, psychology teachers and there's three different groups. Encourage your students to join our student group and if you ever need any support, advice, guidance, please feel free to drop me an email or ask a question in the Facebook groups. Thank you very much.